Cohesion is what's happening in stage three of team development. I'll talk about stage three and the skills required by team members. Hello, I'm Steven Goldberg of Optimist Performance, bringing you practical tips and ideas on leadership, team development, and performance management in the workplace. If you like these videos, please support them on Patreon. These videos are free, but it takes time and money to create. So your support would be greatly appreciated. Find the link in the description of this video. I've been talking about the different stages of team development and the skills required at each stage. If teams can make it through stage two, where there's potentially a lot of conflict, they can reach stage three and start experiencing that feeling of cohesion. And that's really one of the key components where people now are starting to build relationships, they're trusting each other, they want to help each other. That real feeling of team spirit start, starts to permeate, starts to settle in. So cohesion is really the state and it's achieved through team members having gone through developing the skills of good employee communication, of knowing each other, accepting each other, and wanting to work together to achieve common goals. So on one hand, one of the skills to continue building relationships is mutual coaching. The other skill required is goal setting. So team members need to learn how to set goals, not just personal goals. I've covered a lot about goal setting in my previous videos. Uh, you could look those up. There's a playlist on goal setting, but the team comes together to set goals for the department that's in line with the company's overall mission, its overall goals. The other part of it is the skill of analyzing data. And that's really important for leadership to be able to provide the data because if the team is going to set goals, well, they're, they're going to need feedback on their performance, some form of measurement, and they're going to need the data to be able to know if they're on track or not. So that's one of the things in stage three that really starts to take place is the practice of continuous improvement. And that's why learning goal setting, learning how to measure things, analyze data is really important because you want to continuously improve. And if the team is empowered to do that, then that can take place. The other thing they need to learn is how to present their ideas and solutions to management. And each team member needs to learn that so they can take turns. And that means once they've come up with ideas or solutions to put them into a practical format so management can understand what's behind those ideas and they can either approve them and take action on them. Now, because the team is maturing and they're evolving, they can also take on certain managerial responsibilities. So it's up to the leader to start delegating those. And one of them would be to have the team involved in hiring and selection of new employees to join the team. So it's now become a joint decision where it's not just the manager or the leader that's deciding who should be in the team, but he's involving the team itself because they're becoming empowered and taking on this type of managerial responsibility. So the leader's role evolves in terms of this stage. It's very important that he's letting go of power, empowering the team to make more responsible, higher level decisions that affect them as a team. So those are the skills. I'll get more into detail of some of those skills in upcoming videos, as I mentioned. So subscribe if you're not already. Check out some of the other videos in the team development series. There's uh, several on the different stages of team development and the skills involved. There's a playlist on team development that you could also uh, consult. Check out the blog articles on my website. Uh, that accompany many of these videos. Thanks for listening and we'll talk again soon.